Hey everybody, I'm JC from One Shot Adventures, and today we're going to go back to one of my favorite genres, 1930s pulp action, and I'm going to give you an overview of the adventure, The Lost Jewels of Eri, and give you Game Master some tips on how to run it like a pro. Those of you who've watched my channel before know that I'm a big fan of pulp adventures. The perfect pulp adventure has exotic locations, dramatic bad guys and treasures, and action-packed set pieces. And since they usually take place in the 1930s, it's a setting that everybody's familiar with. You don't have to stop and explain to your players about fantasy kingdoms with weird names, or think about alien politics, or learn crazy new spell rules. You just hang on to your hat and punch some Nazis. In other words, I think pulp action is the perfect genre for when you need a break from your usual campaign, or you just want to introduce new players to role-playing games. The Lost Jewels of Eri is a free pulp adventure that you can download on oneshotadventures.com. It pushes the heroes all around Europe to find the legendary lost Irish crown jewels. Along the way, they'll be pitted against angry gangsters, evil cultists, a hidden society of master thieves, and of course, the German Gestapo. Because there's not really one pulp game system to rule them all, you can argue that out in the comments if you want to, you'll find versions of the Lost Jewels of Eri for GURPS, Call of Cthulhu, Classic D6 system, and the brand new RPG Broken Compass, which I've become a recent fan of lately, and I'll probably do a review soon after I've played it a few more times. The adventure also includes pre-generated characters, cool handouts, and VTT assets, so you game masters can run it without a ton of extra effort. Before I jump in, I want to warn you that there are spoilers ahead, so if you're thinking about searching for these lost jewels yourself, you better just turn around and go find another treasure instead. My favorite tip that I give game masters looking to run pulp adventures, and you've probably heard me say this before, is always start at the end of another adventure that your players never played in. This is exactly what the old serial movies and Indiana Jones movies do. Just start right in the middle of the action and let your players just catch up and follow along and move fast. It works great for pulp adventures. So the Lost Jewels of Eerie takes the same approach. The PCs start out deep in the dark tunnels underneath Pajama Castle, which is this crazy castle that's actually built on the inside of a cavern. This place is actually real, and like, wow, it's really built for pulp adventures. You should check it out. It's a really cool setting for any adventure that takes place in the real world. The PCs are in the castle because they bought an old medieval manuscript that would supposedly lead them to this legendary lost sword. They bought the manuscript from a notorious Yugoslav crime boss, Amadej Anzi, who just thought it was a piece of old paper in his collection. But the PCs actually found the sword inside the castle, and they were about to leave when Amadej Anzi realized that he had been swindled, and now he's after them. So what you're telling me is that these Americans buy one of my manuscripts for a fair price, and then it leads them to buried treasure? Boys, go bring the car around. We're going to kill them. So now, Amadej Anzi is furious. He's after them in the tunnels. He wants his manuscript back, and of course he wants the sword that it led to. So the PCs are trapped in the caves. This furious crime boss hot on their heels, and of course he's brought his gun-toting goons along with them, and they're all right behind the heroes. And that's where the action starts. The PCs have to escape these old tunnels under this medieval castle, and of course the tunnels are filled with traps and rickety bridges and maybe even a haunted suit of armor. And they have to escape before Amadej Anzi and his goons catch up and kill them all. By the way, this opening was actually inspired by the original first draft of the screenplay for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where Indy is inside a castle and he has to fight a ghost. It's really weird and I can see why they didn't make that into the movie, but look it up. It's kind of cool. With some luck, your players will swing, punch, and think their way through this crazy cavern chase, and they'll defeat Amadej Anzi, and they'll be ready to go home. But at the airport, they're met by a messenger who says that they've been invited to a going-away party in Vienna. Well, not just any going-away party, 
but the going away party of the Archduke Ferdinand, who is leaving his post to go join the German Luftwaffe. It seems that his beautiful wife, Princess Ileana, held a long-time family grudge against Amadish Anzi, and when she heard that the PCs embarrassed this gangster in those tunnels, well, she wants to hear the story. So the PCs just got a royal invitation to Vienna. Now, no player is going to be able to resist a royal invitation from a princess to tell a heroic story. So, of course, your players are going to want to go to Vienna and get ready for this big soiree. Now, this next part of the adventure is really set up for the role players. The Archduke's going away party is filled with lots of upper crust NPCs for the PCs to engage with. There's famous singers, military leaders, even a Nazi rocket scientist. One of the times I ran this adventure, this party part ran for like over an hour just because the players kept getting into mischief and playing the guests off each other. One of the PCs discovered that the Nazi scientist had actual plans to a rocket with him. And so they arranged this whole heist to get him drunk and then smuggle the plans outside and totally screw with the Nazis. Anyway, my point here is that this part of the adventure can be as extended as long or as short as you want. It just depends on what your players like to do. Eventually, the PCs are invited into Archduke Ferdinand and Princess Ileana's private dining room, where they get to tell their story. But just as things get started, bang! A smoke bomb goes off in the party, and this angry man charges into the room. He has a gun in one hand and a venomous cobra in the other, and he declares himself as this member of a strange cult. And he demands that the ruby that Princess Ileana has around her neck he wants it, and he says that he's going to kill everybody unless she gives it to him. Of course, everybody else in the party is too stunned to react, so it's up to the PCs to save the day here from this crazy cultist who's obsessed with Princess Ileana's ruby necklace. Whenever I've ran this adventure, my players always seem to make a bad situation worse in this part. Like, the last time I ran it, one of my players heroically lunged for the snake and grabbed it out of that cultist's hands and then chucked it across the room. But he critically failed on his throwing roll, and the snake ended up right in the lap of Archduke Ferdinand, and he got bit, and he almost died. Oh, oh, guys, I got the snake! I got the snake! <laughs> Once the PCs deal with this crazy cultist, they'll see that the princess's ruby necklace has a strange Gaelic name inscribed on its back. It says, Gurmula Dai. Now, clearly this name has some important meaning. Why else did this guy want it so bad? But what is it? With a little investigation, the PCs can track down somebody at the University of Vienna who knows a little something about Gaelic lore. And it turns out the name Gormula Dai is the name of a secret society of master thieves. These guys are like the Illuminati of burglary. Like anything that's ever been stolen in history of value like, these guys have been responsible for it. But what's more is that they supposedly have this, like, magical blessing to their society, which promises that they'll never, ever get caught. And that's because they supposedly stole the unstealable Irish crown jewels back in 1907. Now, once stolen, according to legend, its thieves will forever be uncatchable. Now, let's break here for a second. The Irish crown jewels are a real thing. They actually were stolen in 1907 under mysterious circumstances, and they were never recovered. It's one of the 20th century's greatest mysteries. If you like that sort of thing, you really should read up on it. It's a great example of how history can make for a perfect inspiration in a pulp adventure. Talking to a professor at the University of Vienna, the PCs will discover that the Society of Thieves, Gormula Dai, supposedly formed at Dunagor Castle, a ruined castle on the coast of Ireland. But just as the PCs are learning about this, they notice that they're being spied on. It turns out other people are looking for these thieves, specifically the German Gestapo and an Italian spy named Ludo Bocchi. Now, when I ran this part of the adventure, my players 
saw the spy and then they had a frantic chase through the university to catch him. They were like interrupting classes and climbing up library bookshelves and trying to cut him off and just really making a mess of the entire scene. Uh, it was really fun. So you could kind of run this as a chase scene with that spy who sees them and then dashes off and then the PCs have to go chase after him and then they discover that he's working for the Italians and the Germans. With nothing left to investigate in Vienna, the PCs are off to Ireland. They have to stop the Nazis from getting these Irish crown jewels because after all, if the Nazis and the Italians get their hands on them, well, it will make their thieves uncatchable, which on the eve of World War II is just a terrible idea. Just think what the Nazis will do if they can steal state secrets and new technology and more without ever getting caught. So now the PCs make their way to Dunagore Castle in Ireland. And as they arrive, they'll see that the place is swarming with Gestapo agents. Worse, there's evidence that a skirmish has happened recently, and many of the master thieves of Gormula Dai have been executed here. Now, this is the part of the adventure where the PCs get to figure out a plan, and they get to go take down some evil Nazis inside an old castle. It's classic pulp action. Always can play out as like a stealth adventure trying to get in there, or just sometimes my PCs just pull out their guns and just go in blazing. That all fits in this kind of adventure. Once our heroes have taken care of all the bad guys, they'll see that the castle seems deserted. But there's a secret room in its top, and it looks like the master thieves of Gormula Dai were still operating out of here. But sadly, most of them have been killed by the Nazis. However, hidden in the castle is a young teenage girl, Katrina, who was the youngest member of the Society of Thieves. And she was shoved into a hidden closet when the Gestapo first attacked by her friends. She tells the PCs that the leader of the Society of Thieves, a man named Michael Finn, was kidnapped by the suave Italian agent Ludo Bocchi and his German goons. They forced him into a boat and they rowed out to this fog shrouded island that's just off the coast. This island, Katrina explains, is sacred to Gormula Dai. Not only is it where all the society's initiations take place, but it's also the location of the stolen Irish jewels. Katrina is absolutely willing to help the PCs find the island because she wants Michael Finn, her mentor and leader of Gormula Dai, rescued. So the adventure will reach its conclusion on this foggy island that's just off the coast. It's a little rock in the middle of nowhere, but its centerpiece is this massive oak tree that's entirely made from amber. But inside the tree is a stranger sight. There's this mummified, old figure. He's withered and grotesque, and he's buried inside this tree, seemingly dead, and in his hand he holds the diamond star of the lost Irish crown jewels. The Italian agent, Ludo Bocchi, is here too. He's in front of the tree with Michael Finn, the leader of Gormula Dai. Michael's been punched and beaten up, and Ludo Bocchi is threatening him. He has no idea how to get those lost jewels outside of that tree. And so he is threatening to kill Michael unless Michael tells him how. But Michael is stubbornly not talking. So this part is like the classic pulp rescue mission. The PCs need to figure out how to get rid of Ludo Bokey and his Gestapo goons on the island, save Michael, and prevent the jewels from being stolen by the bad guys. But the adventure doesn't make this easy because the Nazis, as they are wont to do, brought reinforcements. And these Italian frogmen emerge from the water at the worst possible moment to stop the PCs. D did you just say you put deep ones in this adventure? Oh, forget what I said before. I can't wait to play now. No, these are actual like frogmen, like Navy SEALs, like special forces, not deep ones. Anyway, there's a German U-boat just off the coast too. And the PCs have to deal with these frogmen, the Gestapo and Ludo Bokey before he can figure out how to get the jewels out of the tree. Now, I will say that this tree is purposely left mysterious. Pulp adventures often have these unexplained phenomenon, especially right in the finale. Since, since this adventure is inspired in some parts by Gaelic lore, I'd like to think that this figure in the tree was some kind of ancient druid. He was entombed inside the tree for some unknown reason, much like Merlin was in the old Arthurian tales. But GMs, you can make this as magical or as horrifying or as realistic as you want. 
If it works with how the adventure is playing out at the end, I always like to add a little supernatural like action into the finale here. Like one time, my PCs, they made a whole mess of the situation. Like I said, they always make bad situations worse in this adventure. And they were about to get killed off by Ludo. Half of them were captured, the other half were hiding. And I had that ancient figure in the tree as Ludo's giving his bad guy speech and how he's won. I had the figure slowly reach out of the amber with this withered hand and grab Ludo and pull him into the tree a little bit. And that just freaked the players out and it gave them some extra time to fight off the goons and regroup and save the day. <laughs> you boys, you really think you're gonna outsmart Ludo Boki? You're totally screwed out of you boat. I have frogmen. And now I'm just gonna kill you and there's nothing you can do to stop me because I'm a Ludo- With a little luck and cleverness, the PCs can prevent the Irish crown jewels from being stolen by the Nazis and earn the respect of the master thieves of Gormula Dai, which actually sets up a lot of good adventure hooks in the future if you're running this as part of a campaign. Well, that's the summary of the Lost Jewels of Eri. While this adventure is a little linear and Sometimes it takes two sessions to finish because like I said, my players like getting distracted at that party in the middle. I think my players have always enjoyed finding creative solutions to the challenges here. And like I said, they've always managed to make a mess of it too. Like when that player accidentally chucked a snake into the Arctic Ferdinand's soup. That actually caused them to flee Vienna after that. And I had to gently push them back on track and rearrange some of the events, but it sure was memorable. If you've played this adventure and you have any crazy stories, I would love to hear about them. Just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, you can download The Lost Jewels of Eerie for free at OneShotAdventures.com. There's also two other pulp adventures that you can download for free there as well, and they're loosely linked to this one. They use the same pre-generated characters and have some light references between them. It's the Curse of Sekhmet and the Phantom Jungle. So there's sort of a trilogy you can go enjoy. And you can also watch summaries of those adventures on my channel as well. Well, until next time, I'm JC, and remember, watch out where you throw your cobra. <laughs>